Let's get to building. receive these from vans with powder coating um, it tends to leave a little bit of powder coating inside of those holes so I'm gonna go through right now and with a number 12 bit uh, just clear out that it's not really cutting into the metal but just clearing out the powder coat and I'll go after as well and uh, clear out the AN4 bolts as well so doing that right now and uh, we'll continue forward So I'm going to be veering from plan slightly here. Uh, my understanding is quite a few other builders have done this and been totally fine with it. Uh, but adding a couple of extra holes here uh, for future wire runs or anything else that I need to get to the rear end of the fuselage. So um, we already have those two up front. I enlarged those earlier uh, for each of these. And then you'll notice um, the other one here already came pre-drilled 
uh, up to three quarters of an inch there. So my plan is to follow uh, what other builders have been doing. I took a look at Pilot Rhino's uh, video. He did this as well. The way I'm gonna do it is, uh, is actually space this out quite a bit. So instead of just doing another uh, skip three quarters of an inch, three quarter inch hole, three quarter, like instead of keeping this consistent, you'll see these two here are gonna be a little bit more spread out. Uh, reason being, we're not sure what we're gonna be running to the back end. Uh, I took a look at someone else's um, build where they were doing an air conditioning system. And I saw in there they mentioned that they needed one inch holes um, to run through the side. Um, so giving myself, kind of future proofing here, I'm giving myself a full inch of space here before even drilling that pilot hole, another full inch, and then that pilot hole there. I'm only gonna be enlarging this for now up to three quarter of an inch, uh, but that way I know in the future I have a nice solid distance between these if those end up being enlarged to one inch in diameter. So that's the plan. I'm gonna go ahead and get this drilled out with a pilot. I'll match it up to here, and then probably also match it up over to that guy somehow. But anyways, get these all enlarged uh, up to just for up to three quarters for now, uh, but here we go.
was hoping you could see on camera, um, but I'm not happy with how this rivet turned out. Um, I've already started the process of drilling it out, which is why you'll see it scuffed up. But what happened is with these nut plates already in place, it's hard to get the bucking bar in there. So if I was to do this again, I would hold off on doing these nut plates now and just do them after the fact. It's easy to get a squeezer in here and plunk them after. Um, but the issue I'm having is the nut plate is pushing the bucking bar away, so it's hard to get any of these bars. I mean, I have, anyways, I've had that bucking bar, this bucking bar, and the good old tungsten bucking bar. Um, and I just can't get in there. The first one went fine. Um, I did not have issues with it leaning over. Um, I think it was out of sheer luck. I think I used this one. Anyways, first one I did fine. This one, like I had worried, um, it started to lean right away. So I've already drilled the, the um, manufacturer head side off, popped it off, and now I'm going through the struggle of getting it out of there. Um, but I'll pull that out of there and then reassess how I want to do this um, and how I want to get this rivet done. No oblong hole or anything. The hole has been preserved. Good to put a new one in. All right, here I am after dinner. I uh, thought long and hard about it, and I was way over complicating things. I don't need to buck this top one. I am fairly certain I can squeeze it. Uh, that will be a whole lot easier than trying to get fancy. Ooh, I can't squeeze it. Hmm. Aha! I think this should work, flipping it around, um, going the other direction. It's gonna bother me, um, having all these shop heads on one side, and then all of a sudden this last one is flipped the other way. Uh, but it does not matter. It is um, strictly cosmetic at this point. Bring it around to the other side. Gonna adjust the rivet uh, squeezer and give it one more ka-chunk and we should be there. certain and yes we are good so yeah it's not gonna fully match you look if you look up and down there I have uh, manufactured head side all the way down there and then that one's reversed but it does not matter uh, so move on I'm happy with how that turned out so good to know uh, anyone else get into this step uh, this top one here you can squeeze it um, or at least I was able to squeeze it with the head on the other side using a standard yoke Chapter 25 was a success. So you'll see behind me here, I just wrapped up the very rearward most bulkhead. Um, anyways, this one was super straightforward. It was a total of, I can't count right now because it's midnight, um, but was that 12, 24 rivets, very straightforward. Um, the other bulkhead, all these were very straightforward. Um, the only real, not necessarily gotchas, but just really, really hard parts of riveting. Uh, were these blocks here. You're probably not gonna be able to see on camera. I'll post it up close clip somewhere on the screen here. Uh, but these blocks that are behind here, you'll see this one is already riveted on. You see there's not two bolts there. I had to leave these two bolts temporarily on there. I had issues riveting. I had to drill it out multiple times. And Vans only gave us just enough pretty much to do it. I think they gave me two or three extras. I drilled out those three extras. So anyways, they're on order from Aircraft Spruce. I only need one. Um, but I would say the easiest way to rivet that is not to try back riveting, not try bucking, but instead use those big old hefty Nipex pliers. Those worked well. Actually, I got it within spec uh, with those pliers. That was awesome. Um, I don't think there's any other gotchas here. i say that's what took you the longest, and ultimately the Nipex pliers worked best for you. Yeah, that was a pain. Yeah. Um, yeah and definitely that was the easiest way to do it, uh, was those pliers. Um, the only other weird gotcha, not really necessarily gotcha, but uh, with my kit, I did receive a service bulletin kit. Um, that had me so scared that I got an old spar. Um, but this kit, from everything I understand, uh, is only for those that are shipped before January 28th of 2021. My kit shipped 
January 26, 2023. I did go ahead though and verify, I put this up against it. I saw where they wanted you to upsize the holes. I verified that my midsection spar carry through bulkhead, whatever those are called. Anyways, verify that those are already upsized. So this was not applicable to me. It was just strange to get it. Not sure if anyone else who has received a kit recently has also got a service bolting kit with theirs or not. Uh, but if you're looking for a service bolting kit and need one, let me you know if you're in the Phoenix area. Um, but that's honestly everything. Uh, pretty straightforward. Um, Amanda, anything else? Um, anything else? I don't think so. This is a pretty straightforward one. Cool. Yeah. Pretty straightforward. Uh, next section that we're jumping into, section 26, mid fuse ribs and bottom skins. That will be a beast. So looking forward to that. So if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. Um, if you have any comments, feedback, concerns, or you just want to say hi, say hi down in the comments down below. And we'll see you in the next video. Adios. Adios. I started it, but don't don't start this. Why? Like in your recording, how do you make it so it's like now start? Well, I kind of look like I have a big old head. What, what, what do you think? What are you gonna say? I don't know. We'll figure something out. But is this this is the end? Yeah, this will be the end. Figure out. Well, should I stop and start it again so you don't have too much footage? <laughs> yeah, we can stop and start it again. <laughs>